Reporting from now from National League Field in Boston, where the fourth All-Star game of history will begin in about 15 minutes. For the past hour or so, the great stars of the baseball world have been performing to the delight of the thousands of fans who have jammed the beehive to witness today's clash between the electric stars of the National and the American League. Boston has taken on a World Series atmosphere with cheering fans greeting their baseball favorites from all over the country with a frenzy that's characteristic of this strong baseball loving city. Not since the World Series of 1914 of this field, now called National League Field, but still called Braves Field by the Dive and the Wolf fans, the not since then has this time and been so covered with big names in baseball. Early this morning, the fans began to arrive, and with a day that couldn't be any better, the World Star game may make another historical chapter in the series. The proceeds, as you know, are for needy ball players, and it could come or be realized for these men who contribute to the game in other and better days. This afternoon, the fields, uh, the beaches are still vacant in a good many sections, so that there's still a chance for a good many fans to come out here and get seats for the game. The grandstand, of course, is in reserve, but we still have to be by game time, but there are still plenty of seats out there in the bleachers, uh, many vacant spots being noticed by our, uh, those of us who are in the booth here atop the grandstand. And this attendance now is, I think, with approximately about 28 or 30,000. You think that's a fair estimate, Fred? 28 or 30,000. Uh, compared this way with the attendance of the previous All-Star Games. Which was in Chicago in 1933, where the idea of the team by the way was originated by Art Ward. The attendance was close to 50,000. In New York in 1934, there were nearly 49,000 fans. And in Cleveland last year, almost 70,000 fans watched the leading players of both leagues. So far, the stars of the American League have won all the star games. And here's the story. The result of the past all star battles in 1933 at Comiskey Park in Chicago, the American League has won by a score of 4 to 2. Four runs, 12 hits, and one error. National all stars, two runs, eight hits, and no error. At that time, Hallahan, Monarchy, and Hubble, and Wilson, and Hartnett, and Gomez, Crowder, Grove, and Miss Carroll were on the mound and catching his second. In 1934, at the Polo Grounds in New York, the American Eagles again won by a score of 9 to 7. Nine runs, 14 hits, and one error. The National League is 7 runs, 8 hits, and one error. And the battery, Hubble, Warnicky, Mungo, Rizzi, Frank House, and Hartnett, and Lopez, Gomez, Ruffing, Harder, Dickey, and Thompson. In 1935, at the Municipal Stadium in Cleveland, the American Leaguers again won, this time by a score of 4 to 1, 4 runs, 8 hits, no errors. The National Leaguers, 1 run, 4 hits, and 1 error. The author, two match at Derringer, Dizzy Dean, and Wilson, and Hartnett, Gomez, Harder, and Hensley for the battle. And there are plenty of the fans that are out here today hoping for a National League win. Advancing the idea that Charlie Jim will make it a ball game with plenty of fight in it rather than a parade of stars before the fans, they expect to see the National League to avoid the fourth defeat in this all-star series. Joe McCartney, the American League manager, substituted to Mickey Cotton, is said to be inclined to the feeling that the game should be considered an exhibition game, and there are plenty of substitutions to be made in order to give the fans a chance to be their favorite. More than two million fans have made the selections of the players, and each manager has added to the results of the polls his own selection of additional players. And Squad as it is out in that National League field today for the American League. In the outfield, Jonah Madger in New York, Bill April of Cleveland, Bruce Dawson of Chicago, George Felser of New York, Ray Rutgers of Chicago, Ben Chapman of Washington. In fielders, Charlie Jones of Detroit, Luke Apple of Chicago, Frank Massetti of New York, Luke Herrick of New York, Jimmy Clark of Boston, Boston Red Sox, and Frankie Higgins of Philadelphia. Sisters, Lexi Grove of Boston, Vernon Kennedy of Chicago, Mel Harder of Susan, Vernon Gomez of New York, Marty Kirsten of New York, and Stuart Royal of Detroit. Captain Rick Farrell of the Red Sox, Bill Dickey of the Yankees, and Riley Hensley of St. Louis. None of these are told you will be Joe McCartney, who's up to school for Mrs. Cochran, and Joe Cronin, the Red Sox manager, will be a coach along with Arthur Fletcher of New York, with a trainer for the American League squad, Scott Peter of New York. Now, here's the National League squad, uh, as it will fit in the budget. Our school is Joe Madden of St. Louis, Mel Art of New York, Wally Berger of Boston, Artie DeLone of Chicago, Frank Sumbury of Chicago, Joe Moore of New York. The infielders will be Bill Herman of Chicago, Martin Vaughn of Pittsburgh, Jimmy Collins of St. Louis, Leo DeRocha of St. Louis, Bill Riggs of Cincinnati, Gus Sewer of Pittsburgh, Sue Martin of St. Louis, and Arthur Whitney of New Mexico. 
The pitchers will be busy being the St. Louis, Kyle Hubble, the lost Kirk Davis of Chicago, Van Mungo of Brooklyn, Lon Warnicky of Chicago. And the catchers will be Gabby Hotton of Chicago and Ernie Lombardi of Cincinnati. Charlie Grimm will manage the National League squad, and the coaches will be Bill McKechnie of the Boston Bees and Jimmy Wilson of Philadelphia. The trainer is Ann Blackshaw of Chicago, and the umpires for today's game will be Bill Stewart, John R. Ridden, William Summers, and Louis Cole. And Fred Long, when we give you the play by play description, uh, we'll give you the starting lineup as it is announced for the beginning of the game this afternoon. There goes the cheer from the crowd and the applause as that comedy man of baseball, Al Jack, uh, comes out to a square ring, which has been five fighting rings, which has been uh, just put up uh, just on the third baseline. And now with his uh, with his characteristic uh, uh, long-tailed coat and with his uh, underdraws, and that's what he's wearing today, showing with his socks rolled down, he's going into his old gag with a few of his trainers in his second down there, and that's pantomime dice game. And as he rolls the dice and uh, uh, calls for the uh, lock of the corner, which he gets, uh, he uh, loses and, of course, goes through the, the characteristic motions of the man who has lost what he wants to win. And now he has taken his long-tailed coat off, and he has a pair of purple tights and a jersey that is half white and half black. Uh, he's made up to resemble a colored boxer, and I don't know whether he's going through a pantomime uh, or whether he's going to have an opponent. I guess it's going to be a little shadow boxing. He steps out to receive the applause uh, of the crowd. His second take him over to the corner, uh, one corner and then the other, so that Al Jack is going to play both corners. And now there is the referee as he raises his hand, and uh, uh, Al Jack salams to him. And I think that this uh, will be a shadow boxing exhibition on the part of Al Jack. While Al is going through that pantomime down there, now let me give you the batting averages of the outfielders in the American League squad. The Matt Jordan, of New York, 358. Averill of the Cleveland, 348. Southbrook of New York, 318. Radcliffe of Chicago, 375. Chapman of Washington, 285. And Garfield of Detroit, 321. And boy, those are our star batting average. The catchers, the Chicky of New York, 362. Hemsley of St. Louis, 298. And Rick Farrell of Boston, 208. Uh, all of this cheering and laughter which you hear from the background uh, from the fans here for Al Jack who has just knocked himself down as he is fully shadow boxing there's the count on the part of the referee he gets up at the count of four and as he gets up there gets his own glove in the way knocks himself out again and the water boy in all of the second direction to see if they can revive Mr. Jack again to the batting absence of the American League and the infielders uh, Geringa of Detroit, 356, Appling of Chicago, 370, Gehrig of New York, 299, Jimmy Potts of Boston, 331, Higgins of Philadelphia, 285, and Corsetti of New York, 319. That laughter from the fans came as uh, Al Jack went to his corner and uh, supposedly knocked out, and instead of him being revived, he started to revive his trainer who assumed his place on the screen in the corner. Jack is now busying himself around down there as he is made up in black faces, as I have told you. Half of his face is black and the other half has not had any makeup on it. And he is going through now a slow motion gag of his, which has always been particularly popular with the fans. Uh, the referee is also going through the slow motion. And uh, with the slow motion, he's connecting his skin. Uh, he is uh, going through all of the... <laughs> All of the different touches that uh, uh, you see when you see a side spot. He's right down in slow motion, and I think he's getting a little applause for, for this gesture as he knocks himself out in slow motion and idly uh, relaxes in his mouth. There's a big cut of water right in space that takes his makeup off, and the fans are being treated to a lot of fun here before the ball game starts this afternoon. I see if we can pick up the applause from out there for our chat. Thank you very much, John. The uh, seconds are taking down the ring from uh, the third to third pace on, and Jack now is posing for the various photographers after he has given his uh, comedy sketch fans who are here at the National League Field. There are still plenty of seats in the bleachers that left to observe, so that those who live around the territory where the game is being played, if they get out here, I think we'll have a chance to get some seats back in. Is it so, Fred? It'll be a great time to come out and watch, and it's a wonderful day for a ball game. Let me give you now the records of the pitchers in the uh, American League ball star floor. Epi Grove of Boston won 10 and lost 3. Gomez of New York won 7 and lost 3. Monty Kirsten of New York won 11 and lost 3. Schoolboy Row of Detroit won 7 and lost 4. Uh, Kennedy of Chicago won 9 and lost 4. 
Del Mar to the Stephen, 110 and lost six. Now, there's the averages for the American League squad. Now, let's look over at the National League statistics. The outfielders have uh, Medley to St. Louis, 329. Art of New York, 331. Burger of Boston, 268. Emory of Chicago, 328. Moore of New York, 307. And Augie Galan of Chicago, 284. Uh, there are two catches on the National League squad. Uh, Hartnett of Chicago and Lombardi of Cincinnati. Uh, Hartnett with uh, 308 average and Lombardi with 314. And the infield averages are the members of the squad. Herman of Chicago, 316. Vaughn of Pittsburgh, 292. Sewer of Pittsburgh, 349. Collins of St. Louis, 29. Drew Martin of St. Louis, 349. Mickey Whitney of Philadelphia, 277. Leo DeRosa of St. Louis, 301. And Riggs of Cincinnati, 251. And here is the average of the pitchers of the National League squad. The Dean of St. Louis, 114 and lost four. That's against Betsy Grove, winning of 10 and losing of three games. Up with New York, 10 and 5. Mungo of Brooklyn, 8, 1, 8 and lost 10. Warnicky of Chicago, 1, 8. 1-8 and uh, uh, lost four. And Davis of Chicago an even up with 7-7. Seven, seven. And Fred has a note for me uh, which I'd like you to put in, Fred. Will you shoot it right uh, on the next one here? Grove, Grove's won 11 and lost three. He won seven games. Okay, I could have had the chance that these statistics that I'm giving to you uh, come up for the holiday games and Fred, of course, who is broadcasting the games every day here always has the last minute statistics for the best is uh, left to another win. That was the one to nothing set, one to nothing cut out, was it? That, uh, over the athletics. And now the uh, umpires of the day, Phil uh, Stewart and Johnny Redden and Bill Summers and Louis Cole, the down around home plate. And I think just a few minutes after discussing the ground rules uh, with the board of strategy of the American League as well as of the uh, National League squad. Yes, I think uh, there's Bill Coleman down there on the Red Sox and Arthur Fletcher of New York and Joe McCarthy, uh, the American League board of strategy, and uh, conferring with them, uh, Charlie Grimm. And uh, the others who are uh, managing along with him, Joe McCarthy of the Bees and Jimmy Wilson of Philadelphia. Uh, there are the batteries that are being announced now, and I'm going to ask Fred if he'll give you the starting lineup of the All Star Game. You are, Fred. All right, well, I'm saying it. Hello, everybody. It's Fred Hoy speaking. Well, here's the part of the All Star Game from the American League team. Here's the American League running order. Batter number one is Luke Appling, the shortstop from the White Sox. Batter number two is Charlie Garinger, the second baseman from Detroit. Batter number three is Joe DiMaggio, playing right field from New York Yankees. Batter number four is Luke Gehrig, first baseman from New York Yankees. In center field, batting number five is Earl Averill, center fielder, from Cleveland. Then comes Rick Farrell, the catcher, from the Red Sox. Left field, Rip Radcliffe from the White Sox. And Frank Pinky Higgins, third baseman. And comes Lefty Grove, the pitcher. And in the National League, batter number one is Augie Galan from the Chicago Cops, center fielder. Batter number two is Billy Hammond, second baseman from the Chicago Cops. Batter number three is Rip Collins, first baseman from the Cardinals. In left field is Joe Medrick from the Cardinals. In right field, playing memory from the Chicago Cubs. Catcher, Gabby Hartman from the Chicago Cubs. Third baseman, Pinky Hickey from the Phillies. And shot cup, Leo DeRosa from the St. Louis Cardinals. And pitcher, Dizzy Dean from the Cards. Lefty goal pitching for the American League team has won 11 games for all three. Dizzy Dean pitching for the National League team has won 14 and lost four. The uh, umpires are now in the huddle down there with the coaches and captains over the ground rules here. Since they've changed uh, this field around here, they've moved it 15 feet to the left here. Here are the grandstands. They have to have a uh, very long discussion for every series on the new ground rules. The umpires of play will be being written, and we don't know just how those other umpires are going to work. The other umpires are Bill Summers, Bill Stewart, and Louis Cole. And three of those umpires come from uh, Matt 
Massachusetts. Bill Stewart is from Milton, Massachusetts. Bill Summers is from Upton, Massachusetts. And uh, Dean Graydon, born and raised in Taunton, Massachusetts. The first matter coming up for the American League will be Luke Appling. Luke is 25 years old, stands 5'10", and weighs 175. Last season, Luke batted 307. He's now batting 315. A lot of 375 fans. He's back in the Luke Garrick in the American League batting average. Now, Bing has played in one all-star game. He went to bat four times, made one hit, and had an average of 250. See the sensational player go to Marshall here, Bob Yankees. And uh, recently, Joe Cohen, manager of Red Sox, paid him a wonderful tribute. He said, Joe says, if I had a boy whom I wanted to teach the proper way to bat, I'd make him study the marginal at the plate. When I first came to the major league, several good batters gave me some very definite instructions. I can remember all the things they told me to do right now. When I see DiMaggio up at that, I can't help recall those instructions. He does everything just according to Hoyle. DiMaggio stands with his bat steady and ready. Takes only a short step, hits with 11 swings. He delays the swing until he sees what type of kick is coming. He's inside pitches. He punches outside pitches to right field. He seems to be a batter without a weakness. He seldom strikes out. When you get him out, you consider yourself lucky. That's a wonderful tribute to that successful boy, Joe DiMaggio, from San Francisco, by his fellow counsel, Joe Corrin, manager of the Boston Red Sox. The umpire is still cutting the ground rules down there. There's Charlie Graham, Joe McCartney, Bill McCartney, Joe Corrin, Leo DeRosa, everybody but Al Scott. Was from the field. He's got a place up there at the top of the press box. And we're about to start this thing. Van Sand is uh, well filled up, some deep in the left field beaches, and also in first base. Then the field is fairly well filled up. Well, we seem to be getting into a little difficulty before we start our game down here. Uh, the umpires and the managers of both uh, clubs, uh, the All-Star Clubs, have been in a long conference down here on the ground rules. And Fred, you check me if I'm incorrect in this, but I think that uh, uh, they have uh, gone through this conference just beyond home plate. And I think I probably overheard the umpire call for Judge Lance over there. Yes, I think that's right. Isn't that the commission who's coming up? And now the... Uh, both boards of strategy, and the umpires are complaining with Judge Landis uh, just outside the dugout of the American Eagles who are wearing the traveling uniform today, and uh, the conference, imagine, will be over uh, some point of the ground rule. This is the largest playing surface of any field in either league, and of course, uh, uh, no ground rules are in effect because the crowd, uh, there's still plenty of room for the crowd here, and uh, of course, before the game began, Bob Quinn was with Kyle Quinn putting his game over and Boston has given out the information uh, that only the capacity of 42,000 would be allowed. But there's no chance for a few thousand to get into the game. Uh, there's the judge who once again has stepped in uh, to the ground rules argument. And there goes the applause from the crowd as the judge goes back to his box beyond the dugout. And uh, the umpires want to take their positions on the field. And the National League will take the field as they go off the dugout. And here's Fred Hoy for a play by play description. Take it away, Fred. Here we are. And once more, I'll give you that batting line to work me. Halfway. Short stop. Derringer, second base, DiMaggio, right field, Geary, first base, Hazel, center field, Rick Pearl, Pat, Ratcliffe, left, Lucy Higgins on third, and Grove is second. And in the field for the National League, Luke Collins on third base, Billy Herman is on second, Leo Jones is playing in smoke, Lucy Whitney is on third, Joe Medwick is in left, Augie Galan in center, and Frank Demery is in right. Is out there now, warming up with Gabby Hyman, 
Bukhaffling steps to the mat. And once more, Bukhaffling is 25 years old, stands five then, weighs 175. Bukhaffling was born in Philadelphia. He now makes his home in High Point, North Carolina. Last season, he's about 387. He's now about 275. He's number second in the batting order. There's a cold strike on Epley. Ball strike on Bukhaffling. Now, as he's ready, got his motion and here's the pitch again. Another cold strike. Two strikes on Epley. Boy, how that mean is. Wasn't me there. Boy, they do strikes. at the first place for the Americans is Joe Cohen, manager of the Boston Red Sox, and at third place closing is Art Fletcher. Too high, ball one. Two strikes on the ball, for down on that plate. Two and one. And did he start his motion? Here it comes. Too high and close, ball two. Two and two. Does he appear to be working very fast out there? on Appling is 2-2. Next matter is Garinger. Following Garinger is Joe Marshall. Going through. And here it comes. As a foul. First base reaches. Two to window. I'm trying to play the scene for him. At first base, Bill Summers. At second, Bill Stewart. And a third will be cold. Two high and close, ball three. Three and two. Count on Epley. Three and two. Now does he start his motion? And here it comes. Got a foul. Hold the loop. Still three and two. Three balls, two strikes. Three and two. Now, does he start the rubber? Not just wind up. Here it comes. Too high and he walks. Luke Halfling gets the face on ball. <laughs> that brings up Tally Garinger, second baseman from Detroit, left-hand batter. Tally is 33 years old, stands 5'11", and weighs 180. Tally was born in Fowlerville, Michigan, now lives in Detroit, Michigan. Last season, he batted 330. He's now batting 366. He's number three in American League in batting, being led by Lou Gehrig and Luke Apple. Been in three all-star games and has batted 444 in the three games. A ball strike on Garrison. One of the greatest second baseman of all time. Riding the class with Larry Leshway, Eddie Collins, and Johnny Evers. There's a foul out there left field, foul ground. Over goes Whitney Ford and Pinky can't reach it. And the count on Carringer is two strikes. Two and nothing. Another great second baseman I failed to mention just a moment ago is Frankie Frisch. God will manage with a great second baseman. Some garages happening on first and nobody else. And the foul in the press box. This press box certainly is jammed. We have riders from all over the country. This time of life's over there. Bill Cunningham, Damon Runyon. Doing nothing. And a pump fly. Down to the Roger Short. Bill takes it. Garinger pops out to DeRozier short. One man gone. And here comes that sensational Joe DiMaggio. From San Francisco. Joe is 21 years old, stands 6 feet tall, weighs 185. He was born in Martinez, Martinez, California. Now lives in San Francisco. Batting 358 for the Yankees. Hot deal in San Francisco. He batted 399. And there's the crowd with Anna Whitney. Fourth play at second. And a double play at first. Joe DiMaggio hits into a double play. DiMaggio 
Rounds to Mickey at third. Whitney goes to Billy Herman on second, forcing Appling. Then Herman gets that ball over to Collins at first base and doubles up the Marshall. That double play went around the horn from third to second to first. Lefty Gold gets a great hand as he steps to the mound for the American League team. On the defense first inning, batter number one is Luke Kaplan. He walks. Charlie Gary is batter number two. Puffs out the doors or short. Then Joe DiMaggio hit it on double play. Whitney the third baseman to Herman the second. Baseman forcing out one. And Herman gets the ball over the first base and double up DiMaggio. Here comes Augie Galan, the center fielder. Batter number one for the Hanks. Augie is 23 years old, stands 5'11 and a half, and weighs 164. Last season, Augie batted 314, now batting 284. This is his first all-star game. His home is in Berkeley, California. A little bit confusing here, fans. The players are using their regular numbers that they use for their home teams. We have four number fours on the American League team. Too high, four to one. <laughs> Ball for Colin Galan, right hand batter. Augie Galan following the Chicago Cup. Now let's see Charge his motor. And here it comes. A close strike on Augie. One and one. One ball, one strike. One and one. Bill McKechnie, the D's manager, coaching at third base for Nationals, and Pi Trainer, Pittsburgh manager, coaching at first. Two, Augie swing. Two strikes, one ball, two and one on Kalan. Well, in the last half of the first inning, it's a no score. Two and one. And here it comes. And he's called on a strike. Augie Galan, he's called on a strike. That brings up Billy Herman. Second base and right hand batter from the Chicago Cup. Billy is 26 years old, stands 5'11, weighs 185. Last season, Billy's had a 341, fifth in the National League of Batting, now batting 316. His home is in New Orleans, Indiana. There they fly to right field. To DiMaggio, Joe takes it. Herman flies out to DiMaggio in right field. Brings up Cliff Collins, the first baseman. And the switch batter is up there right hand up now against South Paul Grove. Rip the city is old, stands five nine and a half, weighs one sixty five. Last season Rip batted three thirteen, he's now batting three twenty nine. Collins was born in Elton of Pennsylvania. He now lives in Rochester, New York. Here's the count on Rip. Now let's see start the line up. Here comes I am right. All two. Do it, I think. Two men gone. We're on the last half of first. There's been no score in the game. Do it, I think. Do it, I think. Oh. All the rules. Strike. Do it, one. Two balls, one strike. Do it, one. Do it, Collins, Manning. Next batter, Joe Medrick. Following Joe is Frank Devers. Last 
season show about 353. Second of the National League in batting. Second to Hockey Morn. Now batting 343. He's third to Putt Jordan. Off the beans and Dolph Camilli of the film. That reach home was in Carteret, New Jersey. They always in two all-star games. Been the bat five times in five games. Made one hit. Average of 200. There's a fly to deep center field. Averill backs up for it, and he does it, and he takes it. Frederick flies out to Averill, deep center field. He's high off. Out in the last half of first. These teams have played the first inning. There's been no score. Pitching for the Americans is Lusty Grove and for the Nationals, Dizzy D. The first batter for the Americans going in the first half. The second is Luke Gehrig. First reason, left hand batter for the New York Yankees. is 33 years old, stands 6 feet 1, weighs 205. Last season, Blue batted 329, now batting 389 to lead the American League in batting. Blue has been in three all-star games and has failed to make a hit. His home is in New York, New York. Outside, ball one. One ball. Too high, ball two. So I think the ball's no time. Now does he ready to pitch? He stepped off the mound. Too high, I think. Too high, ball three. And Gary. Following Gary is early room. Then comes Rick Farrell. Gary gets the base of the ball. Gary walks. Early room. Benefila from Cleveland. Now batting. Wally Murray. Well, was 33 years old. Stands five down and a half. Weighs 165. Last season, Earl batted 288. Now batting 348. He's been in two all-star games, he's been about five times, and has made three hits on an average of 600. He was born in Homer, Washington. He now lives in Cleveland. There's a ball. Back to the screen. Gabby Hatton goes back for the concrete. Back to the screen. One strike in April. Gary on first base, nobody else. We're in the first half, the second, and there's been no score. Is he ready? Two more ones, one and one. And ball one point. One and one. And a tough fly. Back of the razor. Bill back to the he's under. And he takes it. Abel drives out to the razor short. One man gone, Rick Perl. Red Sox catch it, batting. Right hand batter. Rick is 29 years old, stands 5'11, weighs 170. Last season, Rick batted 301, now batting 297. Then the one all star game, then about three times and failed to make a hit. Born in Durham County, North Carolina, now lives in Guilford, North Carolina. All strike on Hook. Very done first base, one man gone. I do. Two strikes on Rick Farrell. Two on Evan. Two high. Oh, two strikes one more. Two on one. Two strikes one more. And Rick Farrell is calling. That brings up Ray Rip Ratcliffe, a left fielder from the Chicago White Sox, left hand batter. Rip is 29 years old, stands 5'10, weighs 175. 
Our team looks at a pretty picture. Now, by 375, it's his first all-star game. He was born in Kiowa, Oklahoma. He now lives in Pittsburgh, Oklahoma. And he has a foul ball. One strike. Looks like a left with Gary on first base to Mengar. Now, the city team is ready. One strike on left. He goes over to third, and they get Mr. Garrett napping off that side. Dizzy Dean whips that ball on the rip corners, and they get Garrett napping off first base. Dizzy Dean, two corners, they get Garrett off first. They finally were marking out the first half of the second. Well, we're going to last half of the second inning. There's been no score in the Bell Star game. Pitching for the Americans is Lexi Gold and for the Nationals, Dizzy Dean. Champions record for the world here in the first box today. Stepping team of London baseball story. Name is Teddy Gilroy. Good to have all the champion ladies here. Look around. Well, here we go. The last half of the second. The first batter is Frank Emery. Emily, right feet the right hand batter. Frank is 25 years old, stands 5 to 11 and a half, weighs 185. Last season, Frank batted 325, now batting 328. Born in Woodland, California, now lives in Los Angeles. All tight on Frank. Well, another one strike. There's a first hit of the game, a single to left, right between, right between Hapling and Higgins. Demery, single to left, goes the national second. Good shot hit. That brings up Gabby Hartman, that's your right hand batter. 85 years old, stands 6 feet 1, weighs 215. Gabby was born on one target. This is early days in Newville, now lives in Chicago. Gabby's batting 308, last season about 344. The third National League batting last season, third to Hockey Vaughn and Joe Metric. Gabby's third All-Star game, they to make a hit, the count is one ball on Hartman. So high and wide, ball two, two and nothing. Gabby on first base, nobody out. Ball 
Anthony Dapio to Rozier. Cut stop. Right hand center. Leo said he is old, stands 5'10, weighs 160. Foul. Strike. Last season, Leo batted 265. He's now batting 301. Leo was born in West Springfield, Massachusetts. He now makes home in Cincinnati. One strike. Too low. Ball one. One and one. Don't often see that Joe tomorrow. You'll play a ball like that. There's a single to center field by Leo. The Roger single to center field. And Avery lets the ball go through him. He recovers. And Leo tries to take second base. And it's thrown out. Averill to Africa. The Roger single to center field. And when the ball got to roll between Averill's legs, rolled away from about 10 feet, Leo tried to go to second base. And was thrown out. Averill to Africa in the shortstop. Leo to second base. Did he see that? Pitcher, right hand batter. This is 25 years old, stands 63 and three quarters, weighs 189. This he was born in Holdenville, Oklahoma. He now lives in Bradenton, Florida. Strike. Strike two. He brings two strikes on, does he? No, nothing. Two strikes. Out. I'm going to repeat that inning again. Demery, batter number one, single left. Gabby Hartman, triple by DeMarcio. Out there in right field, scoring Demery for first base. Then Vicky Whitney, right after Abel, deep center field, and after catch, Hartman scores for third base. Then DeRocher, single to center field, and when Abel put the ball to the first base and ball away about 10 feet, Leo tried to go to second base and was thrown out. Abel to Appling and Shotcom. And Vicky Dean, Duck out. Let's turn you over to the line of travel. Now, here you are, Lance. Thank you very much, Brett. That was certainly a small inning to watch, Lance, when Dunray single with the first hit of the game. And that was a line drive to right by Gabby Hartnett. It was a terrific drive that went through the match, you know, as Fred told you. And it was short as a triple for Hartnett. And then on that long fly, you know, Averill had to go out to the almost the 407 foot marker out in center field in order to get the long fly which followed uh, for the scoring of Gabby Hartnett from third base. And here's Fred Coy now to give it a play by play. Here's the uh, right foot up. The way the first half of the third. What is for? Actual two American nothing. And there they fall. Strike by one. Right foot with a pet in the second inning when Luke Garrett was caught napping off first base. One and one. Foul to the screen. Strike two. Two strikes, one ball. Two and one. Two strikes, one ball. Last one batting. And here's the pitch. Two more balls, two. Two and two. Back to Dean and Dizzy. Go to the model first base. Dean, if just goes on left, but the first, that brings up Frank Pinky. Pinky Higgins, the third base. All the athletics. Higgins up. Pinky's 27 years old, stands 6 feet tall, weighs 180. Last season, Vicky got a 296. He's now batting 285. He was born in Red Oak, Texas. He now lives in Dallas, Texas. All strike. One and one on Higgins. One and one. Right through. He's three. Two strikes. One more. Two and one. Two and two. Two and two. On 
Sticky Higgins. Well, are the pitchers from now warming up? In left field, there's Jimmy Wilson warming up. Kyle Hubble, Adam Whitefield, Jack Judy is warming up schoolboy role. They had a high foul going over in the grandstand. Rip Collins can't reach it. He counted two balls, two strikes. On Higgins. When the first half of third, here it comes. And Piggy strikes out. Ball tip caught by Gabby Hartman. Higgins strikes out. That brings up Lefty Gold, the pitcher. Lefty's a red hot favorite here in Boston. This is the Red Sox. Lefty is 36 years old, stands 6 feet 2 and 1 half, weighs 175. Last season, Lefty won 20 games and lost 12. So far, he's won 11 and lost 3. His home is in Lorna Coning, Maryland. One strike on Lefty. Now, did he start to wind up? Here it comes. Outside, ball one. One and one on goal. One ball, one strike. One and one. Oh, two. Dizzy just served the slow ball. Just slow it over the... Rather a little too close and slow it over the plate. Ball two. Two and one. Two balls, one strike. Foul. Strike two. Two and two on lefty. Two balls, two strikes. Two and two. Did he start the most again? And here comes. Strikes him out. Lefty goal. Strikes out. He scored at the end of the first half of third inning. His hands will sue American setting. Pitching for the Nationals, Jimmy Dean, Paul the American, Lefty goal. Jimmy Dean has fanned three men in three innings. The first part of Paul the National going to first, and the last half of third is Augie Gillan being freed off man. This broadcast is coming to you through WGN Tribune Square, Chicago. National score two into the second when Hartnett tripled after Demery at single. Score Demery and Whitney's long fly to deep center field gave Hartnett the catch score after catch. Run number two. Here's Augie Galan coming up. And we're going to last half the third. Well, Lefty starts his wind-up. Here it comes. Too high, ball one. And a fly to Abel in center field. Earl. Takes it to retire, Augie. Galan flies out to Lee Bull in center field. One man gone. Billy Herman batting. They will fly it out to the Marshall right field. First time up. Right hand batter. Here's the pitch coming. Foul over the roof. One strike on Herman. Another one strike. One man gone in the last of third. For oh, national two Americans, nothing. One strike. Two throws. Four one. One one on the run. One ball and one strike. One and one. Ball two. Two and one. Two balls, one strike. Two and one. Two balls, one strike. Two 
Three and one. Three balls, one strike. Two balls, two strikes. Three and one. And Billy Watt. Billy Herman gets the base on ball. That brings up Rip Collins. Rip Watt, the first time up. Tackles have a man on first base. One out. Following Rip Collins, Joe Metric. Then comes Frank Cover. Herman on first base. One out. They're good. There they fly to that left field. All of those lines with Warren in the left center. The wind's all that. Back to Pink. Put up. Collins flies out to Ratcliffe in left center. Joe Medwick batting. Joe flies out to Hazel Sunfield. First time up. Right hand batter. Arnold Green. Right. Medwick. Coming on first base, two up. Now, Grove is ready. Here it comes. And they fly on the left. That's here, Ratcliffe. You can reach that. He's over here. Nice running catch. Nice running catch by Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe over near the foul line in left. Medwick flies out to Ratcliffe in left. Very pretty running catch. Fire rip. I'm going to turn you over to Hannah Sanders. Here you are, Hannah. Just for a second, I'll give you a time out, Sam, for state identification. We're broadcasting this All Star game between the National All Stars and the American League All Stars. That's the National League field in Boston. And the score at the end of the third inning is National League is two and American League is nothing. This is the Yankee Network and the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is WGN, Good News Square, Chicago. Now from two baller from the New York Giants is now pitching for the match. And the first part of the base now will be the leadoff man, Luke Hadley. Hadley lost the first time up. The last first half of the fourth inning was for an actual two Americans nothing. Now starts his motion. Here it comes. A ball strike on loop. One other one strike. There they fall out there in right field, fall ground. All of those, can we fall? He makes a nice running catch of that. I didn't think of trying to reach that ball. Nice running catch, that foul ball by Frank Emery, the right fielder. Appling, fouled out to Emery, the right fielder. One man gone, Sally Garrett the batting. Sally popped out to DeRosa short, first time up. Now Kyle starts in motion. There's a clean hit to right field by Garringer. Charlie Garringer lines a single to right. Joe DiMaggio about it. Joe hit it on double play the first time up. By the, by the way, fans, the three innings that Dizzy Dean worked, he allowed no hits, and two men reached first base. Two walks, one to Epping in the first, one to Gary in the second. Two men reach first base on Diddy D. All strike on DiMaggio. One and another one strike. Gary's on first base and one out. Oh, strike two. Two strikes on Joe. Two and another two strikes. Charlie. Do another, two strikes. There, 
has a foul ball in the left field foul ground. Down to two strikes on DiMaggio. Now, Hubble is ready. And here it comes. And they high from Ivan Tembe to Clam. Leo DeRosa goes back for it. And Leo Zonis it. He takes it to retire Joe. DiMaggio flies out to DeRosa at short. Two men are gone. Two Garrett coming. Who walked the first time up? Dragon Pepperman on first base. Two out. Out of Luke Eric. And there's a ball gets away from Honda. I don't know they're going to score that. Like pass ball. Only wild pitch. That's a pass ball. Not to. Happy Hartman, Derringer, goes to second, only a pass ball. Ball can wait from Gabby Hartman, roll about 10 feet away from the plate. Derringer going to second, all a pass ball. One ball to count on Gehrig. And the grounder, nice shot by Collins. Hubble covered first, he breaks the through, and the runner is retired. Gehrig sends the grounder down to the right to whip Collins, the first three to whip through the nice top of that ball. He knocks it down, picks it up, through to Hubble, who covered first base, and Gehrig was retired. Mark well, Kennedy, first half of the ball inning, he is matched with two American Trophies. This is the national down with Carl Hubble, and Paul B. Markham in some school more low, from Detroit. School more low, now in the first for the Americans. Big right-hander. Well, at 24 years old, stands 6 feet 4 and 1 half, but he's 210. Last season, school boy won 19 games and lost 13, and so far he's won 7 and lost 4. The first man of the face rule is Frank Emery, who started that pass to rally in the second with a single left. Frank Emery from the Chicago Cup, right hand battle. Well, here's the last half of the fourth inning. The national scored two in the second. Every single, hot and simple, and with me up to ride away those for the two runs. Here's the pitch coming to play. And a foul ball over by the American dugout. Big foul goes down. Gary comes up. Gary! Gary makes the put out. They nearly collided that time. I saw the American dugout. Emery fouls out to Gary, first base. One man gone. Gabby Hart was running. Gabby drove it. Hard triple to right. First time up and drove in the first run and made the sport himself. Run number two. Here's the first pitch coming to Debbie. And there's the ground and down to left wing is short. He fumbles, recovers, and throws out Gabby at first base. Left wing is short. Throws out Hartman at first. Little fumble that ball for a moment. Made a very fast recovery, and he got Gabby at first base. Two men gone. Now we have Pinky Whitney in third base, everybody. Whitney flied out Ray Rowe in deep center field the first time up, and gave Hot of the Death for third base after the catch. Ball strike on three. One and one strike. Two men gone. 
gentlemen, we're in the last half of fourth inning for a national school, American Nothing. Two balls from the front. Now, two boys as low as running. Shot to one. Go in two. Here it comes. Uh, there they line, Smeal. Two. Right center by Whitney. Danny hit for thinking. Whitney. Finds the single to right center. Brings up Leo DeRosa. Leo single center field. First time a right hand batter. Line on first and two up. Too high, ball one. One ball. One enemy. Strike swing is one and one on Leo. One ball and one strike. One and one. One ball and one strike. Strike on DeRosa. Two strikes, one ball. Go in one. Go in one. That's what they have with me on first base. And two up. Two high goals. Ball two. Two and two, Leo. Two and two in the batter. Two out and a man on first base. Here it comes. He strikes him out. The road to strike out. Final national out in the last half of the fourth. He scores the enemy fourth inning of San Francisco American Nothing. Listen for the national. Now Huddle and for the American now, two more goals. Two. Two strikes, one ball. 
Just any one man gone. Or is that two American nothing? Now, now, start the motion. Here comes. And he strikes him up. Great barrel strikes out for the second time. Rip Rant was batting. Rip Rant out first time up. Left hand up. Second base, Charlie takes it. Hubble. Up top, 
for the second time in this ball game. That brings up Joe Medwick. Joe flied out to Wave on center field the first time up. Second time up, he was on to the hit by Rip Grasslip and left when Rip went over to the foul line and made a very pretty running catch. That we up with Collins on first, Herman on second, and one out. One run into the Nationals in this fifth, home run by Galan. All strike on Joe. One another, one strike. One another, one strike. And here it comes. Wow. Right two. Two strikes on Joe. Joe, I think two strikes. Collins on first, Herman on second. One out. Now, oh, oh. waiting for Roll to pitch. Now the two strikes on the batter, Joe Medley. There's a hit to left field. Here comes Herman around third. Herman is scoring. There goes Collins to third on the hit. Medley singles to left, scoring Herman from second base and sending Collins from first to third. On the hit. That hit was a ground ball between Appling and Pinky Higgins. Green hit in the left field. Score is now national four. American nothing. Back up there now is Frank Demery. Frank single first time up. And the second time up, he fouled out. Have men on first and third, and only one out. There's a ground to Danny Higgins. Fourth play at second, and a double play at first. Demery grounds to Higgins at third. Higgins throws to Garringer on second, forcing Medwick. Then Garringer gets that ball over to first base and doubles up Demery. That double play went around the horns from third to second to first, and in that fifth inning, the Nationals scored two runs and made two hits. Darren there charged to Joe DiMaggio, the right field of the Americans, and the inning was featured by Harvey Galland's home run. Home run hitting the flag ball on the foul line in right field and pounding into the bleachers foul. But it was a fair ball as ruled by the umpire. So at the end of the fifth inning, it's Nationals for American nothing. For the national town level and for the American schoolboy role. Going so the first half of the sixth inning, the first runner for the American is schoolboy role. This game, the national scored two in the second and two in the fifth. Ball. As they fly to 
Centerfield and Galan takes it. Hopley ties out to Galan in Centerfield. Two men gone. Meanwhile, Gallagher has Cliff Davis, the right hand pitcher from the Cubs, warming up the full cut in left field. Charlie Gavin's batting. Charlie has made one single. First time up, Charlie slide out to DeRosa. Second time up, he singles to right field. One another one ball. Two more ball, two. Then they made only two hit balls. Carl Hubble in two and two thirds. Garen to walk. Garen to get the base on ball. That brings up Joe DiMaggio. Joe hit into another play the first time up. The second time up, he flies out to the Rosier at short. Get a good hand from the crowd. All strike on the module. One early, one strike. Two low, four one. Four one on the module. One more, one strike. To Hubble, Carl. Throws him out of first base. Hubble, the pitcher, throws out DiMaggio at first. They finally mark it out for first half of six. The score at the end of the first half of six inning is Nationals four, Americans nothing. Pitching for the Nationals, Carl Hubble, and for the American schoolboy roll. The Nationals score two in the second and two in the fifth. Gabby Hammond drove in the first run for the Nationals, and he was driven in by Whitney Fly in the second. And in the fourth, rather the fifth, the land hit a home run, and Herman single, Collins walked, Joe Medrick single left, Mort Herman with the Nationals' fourth run. Is Gabby Hammond coming to bat? Gabby triple the first time up. Second time up, he grounded out. Good. Goslin. Boots Goslin playing left field. For the Americans out. Boots Goslin from Detroit. Ball strike. Ball strike on Hartnett. Right. Outside and low, ball one. One and one on Hartman, one ball and one strike. One and one. There they go to down to Appling is short. Look, throws to first, and he gets Gabby. Appling is short, throws out Hartman at first. One man gone, lost the six. Dickie Whitney batting. Whitney fired out the first time up. Run scoring out to catch center field. Second time up, Pinky single center field. Right hand batter. He lays a bond goes foul. One strike on Pinky. One strike. One strike on Whitney. Here it comes. Foul screen. Strike two. Two strikes on Whitney. Two strikes. 
Here's the pitch coming. Two high and close. All one. Two strikes, one ball. Two and one. Two strikes, one ball. Two high and close. Ball two. Two and two on one team. Two balls, two strikes. Down to Billy Hammer, 
second. Philly picks it up, throws to first, and gets Earl. Earl in a second, throws out Averill at first. Here's Bill Dickey coming up. Diving in place of Rick Farrell. Two 
two on, two strike, one ball. Two and one. Two and one, two strike, one ball. There's the grounder. Down is the road, he knocks it down. He can't handle the ball. And let's see, it looks like a hit. It is a hit. Oh, Jimmy Fox. Jimmy Fox. Single through the road at a tough stop. Handling Godwin from first to second on the hit. Out of the hard chop, grounder. The road to knock it down. The ball rolled behind Leo. Leo tried to make a fourth play at second base, but he was too late. Godwin reached there safely. And the foul, Jimmy Fox, is credited with a base hit. Team is gone. We'll have a ladder on a 50 block. Gabby Hartman down there. And the batter coming up. For a schoolboy role is George Selker of the New York Yanks. George Selker. George is 28 years old. Stands 5 to 11 and a half. Weighs 180. Now running 318, last evening on 312. Delcourt was born in Huntsville, Ontario. He now lives in Rochester, New York. Left hand batter. Ball strike on George. Rangers have been on first and second. Two up. One strike. Strike two, he swings. Two strikes on George. Telegram has Dan Mungo, the Brooklyn right-hander, warming up the bullpen in right field. Also, Ron Wannicke of the Chicago Cup. Outside, ball one. Two strikes, one ball. Join one. Two strikes, one ball. Two close. Two. Two and two. Two and two on Selkirk. And outside, all three. Three and two on George Selkirk. Three balls and two strikes. Jimmy Parks on first. Uh, two stars on second. And two men gone. First half of Tim Billing, the score is national four, Americans one. Now, Bert Davis is ready. Here's a big one. He walks. Delker is batting for all. Gets the base on ball. And that brings up no gambling. Gambling, nothing. Lucas reached first base once. He walked in the first inning. Second time up in the fourth inning. He fouled out Demery and Wright. And the third time up in the sixth inning, Appling right out to center field. He's up there now. The base is loaded and two out. Americans have Delco on first, Fox on second, and Coswell on third. Now Kurt Davis starts his motion, and here's the pitch. Outside, ball one. One other one, ball. Ball strike. One and one on loop, one ball and one strike. Two strikes. Davis got 
motion again. And here it comes. There's a clean hit to right field. One run. Two runs scoring on the hit. Hatling. Hatling singles to right. Scoring Gosman and Jimmy Park. We have two more runs for the Americans. Scores down Nashville four. American three. Americans have Hatling on first. Delkert on second. Two up, and the batter coming up is Tommy Garrison. That hit of Apple into the ground ball. About 10 feet to the right of Chris Collins, the first base. Delkert had a jump in the air to avoid being struck by that seventh ball. By that hit, and I believe the Nationals are going to make a change. Here's the pitcher coming in, and it looks like Ron Warnick off the top. I believe Kurt Davis is done. He'll know in just a moment. He up to him, out of the national players are gathered around the pitcher's box. Ron Warnick is... Ron Warnicke is now pitching for the match. First man to face Ron is a dangerous batter, Charlie Garrison. Charlie's flight out the first time up. The second time up in the fourth inning, Charlie threw the right, and the third time up, he walked. Got to wait now for Warnicke to get warmed up with Gabby Hawkins. We're in the first half of the second inning, and the score is American 4, and the run of the uh, national score, American 3. Well, here we go. Here's the batting. Happening on first, Telcook on second, and two out. Continues to warm up for the Nationals, the most time on left field. Oh, Gary Hodges just got into a huddle with Ron Warnicke. Well, this isn't the first time to get into his face. Warnicke faced the last ball with a little bit. Too high, ball one. First and second and two outs. One ball. Two close, two all two. Two and nothing on Terringer. Dragons have made four hits in this big seven. Four, three runs. Two and two balls and no strike. Outside, ball three. Three and a thing, three balls and no strike. Out on Gillinger. Now, why he's running? Here it comes. All strike, three and one. Three balls, one strike. Terrific drive, right at DeRosa, at short, all the final out. 
Joe to Mudd. Come on, Joe. Lines up to the Rizzo short. The final. Bring it up in the first half of the seventh. And here's the old pitching. Pitching the last half of the seventh. Everybody up. In that seventh inning, the Americans scored three runs and made four hits. Two base on balls in there. That is a tremendous home run shot by Lou Gehrig. Two hits for Billy. That 
time he's reached first. Two singles in a walk. Now we have Rip Collins batting. Rip has reached first base twice on walk. The other time up, he slide out to left field. First base, the two men gone. When the last time for steps on the score is Angle 4, American 3. There's the fly to left. Carlton goes off hard and the goes. Takes it. Collins flies out to Godwin in left field. The final last one out in the last time for steps. Final score at the end of the seventh inning is Angle 4, American 3. The Disney Marcus now is Mel Hunter and for the National Lawn Linnake. Half eight inning, the first battle for the Americans is Luke Gary, who first time up walked, second time up ground out, and the third time up hit that tremendous home run flash in the right field beach. That is, reaches by the scoreboard we call the jury box reaches here in Boston. That home run carried about 430 feet.
There's no digger coming up. Waiting for Wallachie to fix now. And on second base, and one out. Hello, ball one. Yeah, the old tying run on second base. Why not even ball? One ball. Too high, ball still. Two and nothing. Two and nothing. There's an arm down a half in a second. Then he throws the first he gets, Bill. Henry going to third on the out. Third in a second, throws out. Dickey at first. Henry going to third on the out. Both Coswell, a man on third base, and two out. In the first half of the eighth inning, for National Sport American Three. Two 
Fox is called out on strike. The final American out of the first half of the eighth. The score at the end of the first half of the eighth inning is National League All Stars 4, American League All Stars 3. This is for the Nationals, Long Wanaki, and for the Americans, Mel Harder, off from Cleveland. Mel Harder, by the way, is 26 years old, stands 6 feet long, and weighs 170. Last season, Mel will fix his 42 games. He won 22 and lost 11. So far this season, he's won 10 and lost 6. Harder was born in FEMA, Nebraska. He now makes his home in Cleveland. Brent Potter for the National going to last half the eighth inning is Joe Medwick, who has made one single in three times up. Joe was robbed of a hit in the third inning when Rip Blackwood made a very pretty running catch of his fly ball over to the foul line. Medwick batting, going to last the eighth. One strike, no swing. Why are they one strike? He lays upon town to third base to Fox. Jimmy throws him out of first base. I play Jimmy. Medwick laid upon town towards third. Jimmy Fox went past that ball and threw out Medwick at first. So hit that ball a little too hard. One man down, Frank. Mellard is now batting. Mellard of the time. Left hand batting. Mel is 28 years old, stands 5'9 and a half, weighs 165. Last season he batted 322. He's now batting 321. He was born in Britain, Louisiana. He now lives in New Orleans. strike on Mel. Mel has that very peculiar stance to bat. He tossed his right leg as, it, as the pitch comes up. One strike. Two low. Ball one. One one on Mel. One ball and one strike. Two, two, two and one, two balls, one strike. Dark was too low. Two and one, two balls and one strike. Too close. Ball three, three and one about. Three balls, one strike. One man gone, we're in the last half of the inning. Four national four, American three. Strike on Mel, and the count is now three balls to strike. Three and two. Three and two. There's a guard, it's a hit. To the right of that lane, into left. That's the base hit. Now that, starting for Demery, singles to Appling's right, into left field. Gabby Hunter batting. Gabby tripled the first time up. The other two times at bat, Gabby was thrown out of first base. Too high, ball one. Hell on first base, one out. One other one ball. One. 
there's a line drive right ahead of the bathroom. And Art had to hunt with back to first to prevent being doubled up. Hunt lands out the bathroom is short. Two weeks. Cincinnati's third baseman is going to bat for Dinky Whitson. Two weeks, R I G E S. Meanwhile, let's be gone, Miss. Uh, the Yankee South was morning up to my just a bullpen and right. Who is this 26 years old? Says 511 away from 178. Last week he got a 278. Now batting 261. His home is in Keybane, North Carolina. Left hand battle. Very little favor this break. Wow, looks right. One strike on Blue Ridge. Hell out is on first base. Two men are gone. Two high, four left. One and one, one ball, one strike. Ball two. Two and one, two balls, one strike. Two and one. Now out is on first one. Now the swing, two and two on Lou. Six years old, stands five ten and a half and weighs one sixty. Last season, Frank batted two fifty six. He's now batting three nineteen. He makes his home in San Francisco. All right, it's playing right field for the Nationals. Riggs is playing third base for the Nationals. Now, not playing right field, and the batter is Frank Corsetti, right hand batter. Call strike on Frank. Well, one, 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 cross heavy. One ball, one strike. One, one, one ball, one strike. Outside, ball two. Two close, ball three. Three and one. Three and one. Three balls and one strike. Batter is 
Cross heavy. Now, want to start his motion? Here it comes. A ball strike, three and two. Three balls, two strikes, huh? Right? Three and two. Dropped by Gabby behind it. Gabby couldn't hold that one. And Frankie Cross said he gets alive. Down on Frank is three and two. Three and two. Three balls to strike. Cross heavy strikes out. Cross heavy batting for Hannah strikes out. One man gone first tonight. Look at me, buddy. There's the guarder, Carl Herman a second. Billy goes to first, then gets loose. Herman a second, throws out at me, at first. Two men are gone, the first half of the inning. Down again with you, buddy. Down again with you, made one single, and he's got twice. Yellow time up, Gary Flight out. Thank you very much, Brooks Collins. 
Well, boys, listen, I'm a little excited right now. I don't know just what flavor to let you want. We've had Charlie Grimmer on here. Here's Joe McCarty, the manager of the Americans. Folks, it was a great game. Sorry to lose, but uh, I want to congratulate Charlie Grimm and the National League. It's a wonderful game and a great day and a wonderful crowd. Thank you very much. And I want the governor of the Commonwealth to stand here to say just a word. Governor Shirley of Massachusetts. One of the largest crowds you've ever had in the history of baseball in Boston and one of the best games ever played. Thank you very much. The boys have had their way all back to the dressing room. We've got set. We have first down to the head, uh, Grimm, who said his first word after winning this afternoon. And uh, also, we were followed immediately by uh, Joe McCarty, the manager of the American Leaguers in the All-Star Game, and then his excellency, the governor of Massachusetts. And uh, all of these fields have been cleared now. The players who have quickly made their way back to their dressing room. I want to send the microphone back now to Fred Hoy, who will give you the run. This is one, this is another. See you out there. See you out there. Very close. Four runs. Eight hits, no errors. Americans, three runs, seven hits, and one error. This is Fred Hoy speaking. Goodbye, everybody. This is the Yankee Network and the YouTube Broadcasting System. This is...